Hello everyone and welcome to a most violent game from the final round of the second day of the Superbet Rapid and Blitz tournament currently being played in Zagreb, Croatia. It's a rapid tournament, of course, uh, Alireza Firuja versus Shahir Mamedyarov. Now, uh, we've seen the game between Alireza and Magnus. It was a very, very intense game, but uh, Alireza had it all figured out and he completely um, uh, nullified uh, any uh, ideas Magnus might have had in that Catlin. But now uh, he faces uh, Mamedyarov and that, uh, as, as you guys know can always be extremely dangerous but here it's even more dangerous as already on move two uh, Mamedyarov employs a move that uh, well it's not that it has never been played before but it has only been played uh, you know a handful of times and uh, you know from notable games only uh, twice by Fabiano Corwana and once by J uh, Jeffrey Xiong uh, so uh, let's see wh wh what what is this move so here uh, Alireza opens with c4 he goes for the English opening Ponta e5 and g3 uh, going for the standard king's English variation uh, and now usually here you will see knight f6 knight to c6 somewhat rarer c6 but never or rather almost never bishop to e7 this is what uh, Mamedyarov plays it doesn't have a name officially but as Fabi is the only top player that ever played it I'm going to call this the Fabi system uh, of the uh, king's English variation of the English so here uh, bishop to g2 Alireza just continues development and now pawn to f5 uh, again, not a new position. Uh, uh, it is a known one. D4 and knight to, F, uh, knight to c3 are known moves. But here Alireza plays b3 and it is now already as of move 4 that we have a completely new game. And before we check out uh, what uh, you know uh, mysteries were uh, uh, un unveiled in this um, uh, game, let's just check out uh, a nice photo between these two gentlemen. Uh, we already seen uh, Alireza's uh, t-shirt in, in the game against Magnus, but here you can see Shahriar um, in, in a, you know a casual black t-shirt i thought maybe uh shock was um, uh, you know trying to have uh, the black t-shirt with the black pieces and maybe the white t-shirt with the white pieces so i went back and checked all the photos uh but uh, it's not uh, really the case he just has a black t-shirt in all the games uh, so if you guys were wondering about that uh, but okay let's continue knight to f6 uh, we have bishop to b2 uh, getting the bishop to this nice diagonal and pawn to d6 with e3 uh, shock castles and knight to e e2 now we have c6 and alireza castles as well we have bishop to e6 and now knight b to c3 uh, just nicely continuing development knight b to d7 and now pawn to d3 uh, getting this uh, very nice structure here we have queen to e8 uh, and now queen to d2 uh, connecting the rooks we have king to h8 preparing to shift the bishop over to g8 and now pawn to b4 preparing to grab more space on the queen side with pawn to b5 so bishop g8 we have pawn to b5 and and rook to c8 now so a uh, very very slow maneuvering game rook a to b1 and now striking in the center with pawn to d5 we have b captures on c6 captures on c6 c captures on d5 c captures and now pawn to f4 and here uh, mamidarov uh, executes uh, pawn to e4 uh, a nicer way to handle this was pawn to d4 uh, but it is uh, very tricky to see why point is that after e captures on d4 you play e4 and and only after d captures and e4 f captures and the knight captures and everything gets traded off you play something like bishop to b4 attack the queen uh open up a discovery on this bishop and you can see how the white king is completely in the open and it will be very hard for white to defend this position but it's a rapid game so of course you don't expect uh uh, such things to be in the position uh, so here the immediate pawn to e4 and now knight to d4 by Alireza going after the f5 pawn so queen to h5 defending and activating the queen and now comes knight to a4 opening up the bishop's diagonal here uh, we have knight to g4 now threatening checkmate with queen captures on h2 and Alireza of course just kicks away the knight with h3 knight back to f6 and now rook b to c1 as the knight now left the c file we are offering a of uh, of rooks here so queen to g6 putting pressure on the g3 pawn king to h2 defending and e captures on d3 finally uh queen captures and now knight to e4 so you could uh, leave this knight on e4 but it's a rapid game very little time on the clock uh, and this is basically a monster knight so you give up the bishop no questions asked so bishop captures on e4 f captures attacking the queen and queen to b5 now going after the knight here so rook captures 
captures on c1, rook captures and knight to e5. This is a beautiful move by Mamidyarov. Uh, if he if he did not have this move, it would be very hard to uh, actually find a move here for black. But after knight to e5, uh, now Alireza has to be very, very creative. Point is that after, uh, if the knight is captured, of course, you just get checkmated. Rook f2 check, and it doesn't matter what you play here, uh, because uh, after you move the king, queen captures on g3, and uh, well, if the king was on g1, it would come with check, so this would be checkmate, but even here, there's really no defense against uh, rook or queen to h2 checkmate. So, of course, uh, uh, the knight will not be captured, Alireza goes back with the queen, queen to e2, and now knight to c4. Attacking the bishop here, we have bishop to a1, and now queen to a6. Uh, attacking the knight on a4, knight to c3, attacking the pawn on d5, and now bishop to f6, asking uh, what, what do you do here. So uh, I hope you guys weren't um, uh, thinking of actually capturing the d5 pawn. It's very easy to forget about our good light square bishop friend here on g8. So here, knight to d1, remaneuvering the knight to f8, then to g4, and then we're going after the bishop on f6. We have rook to b8, activating the rook, and now knight to f2 as planned. We have queen to a3 now with a double attack on that e3 pawn and rook to e1 you're also attacking the rook here but luckily we can fix all of this by just moving the rook to e1 uh, rook to b6 uh, we know knight to g4 is coming uh, this will uh, put pressure on the bishop here so we want to move the bishop and then put the rook um, somewhere along the sixth rank to help out with the attack knight g4 with bishop to e7 and now knight to f5 and now you can see that Alireza's pieces are very very close to the black king and with little time on the clock this is of course extremely unpleasant uh, that g7 pawn really feeling the pressure uh, so bishop back to f8 and now comes bishop to d4 a beautiful centralizing move by Alireza going after the rook here so it comes with tempo rook to a6 and here just rook to b1 and now of course you can see that the knight is coming to uh, to, to, to maybe e5 also in some weird variations maybe even to h6 uh, the rook is coming to b8 to put pressure on the on the back rank and it's very hard to actually find a good move for Mamedyarov here uh, one thing of course you could play here is just uh, bishop to e6 to eliminate one of the knights or you could just go for a queen trade for example queen captures rook captures this comes with check king to g1 uh, but again uh, knight to e5 is coming rook to g8 is coming and it will be very unpleasant for black to play this however if you play it pro properly uh, you have nothing to worry about so instead after rook to b1 uh, queen to d3 was played by Mamedyarov offering a queen trade and now the position is completely winning for Alireza but only if you find the exact move order so feel free to pause the video here and try to find the idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, fighting this, um, uh, you know, undeniable threat. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, queen captures on d3. Of course, I mean, it's rook to b8, but you can't play this uh, as you would hang your queen. So first you have to trade queens and now rook to b8. And there is no defense against this, but it that's easier said than done, <laughs> as you'll see in the game. So rook captures on a2 with check and now comes king to h1. Now, King to h1 uh, is a draw, king to g1 is a victory here, but uh, king to g1 is a winning for reasons beyond our wildest imagination, and you would hate me if I even tried explaining it. So let's just go king to h1, uh, and now comes knight to d6. Uh, and uh, now after knight to d6 is played, Alireza is once again winning. The only way to uh, save the position here is to play h5. Uh, give the king a little bit of breathing room here, attack the knight, and now after rook captures and f8 you cannot capture you have to play king to h7 this is the only way to escape certain death and now after knight e7 going after the bishop you play knight to d6 yes this is all required just to survive this position rook captures on g8 knight to f5 now guarding the g7 square and now uh pretty much everything is a draw here but getting to this uh position uh you know with little time on the clock in a rapid game is impossible but now let's say rook captures knight captures uh, knight to f six with check and now you have a, a draw by repetition because if you go to a h8 a, a, a knight to g6 will be checkmate so you are forced to repeat here king to h6 knight f to g8 with check king to h7 and knight to f6 check and so on so uh that's the way to do 
it. But uh, after king to h1, Mamadiaro played knight to d6, and Alireza's position is once again winning. Uh, however, not for long. He plays knight captures on g7, which is the correct way to go. Uh, and then now, of course, you can't play bishop captures. If you play this knight h6 and uh, you're getting checkmated, the bishop cannot move uh, due to the light square bishop on d4. And, uh, well, our next move is rook captures on g8. This will be a checkmate. So Mamidarov tries knight to b5, puts pressure on the bishop here. Alireza just moves it, bishop to f6. With h5, uh, as we know that this is a very important move to help out with the defense of the black king, uh, but it is much too late for such things. We have knight to f5 with check, sorry, uh, knight to f5 with check, king to h7, and now rook to b7 check. Uh, uh, very nicely executed by Alireza, as this is the only winning move, and now comes bishop to f7. Again, a very nasty move to make uh, because if you just move the king king to g6 knight to h4 is checkmate i mean look at this this is uh, uh beautiful uh so uh Mamidarov has to start giving up material bishop to f7 rook captures on f7 with check king to g6 attacking the rook and now rook captures on f8 king captures on f5 and now alireza plays knight to h2 as his knight is still hanging uh, but this is not the path to victory the path to victory was actually and i'm sure you guys already see it uh you know it's always fancy to move the knight on the edge of the board but here it's actually e4 and centralizing the knight with this check point being that after d captures knight to e3 comes with check after e6 uh we're gonna play f5 with check king to d7 now rook to d8 with check and once the king moves now pawn g4 captures captures then we start advancing our g pawn and we win the game with black having uh, very very little to no counterplay uh, but okay after king captures on f5 uh, knight to h2 by alireza uh, and even though alireza is up a piece uh, it doesn't really matter there's the past d pawn and there's the past a pawn that uh, of course alireza has to worry about so pawn to d2 uh, by mamidarov and now bishop to c3 opening up a discovery from the rook we have king to e4 and now bishop captures on d2 alireza has to give uh, uh, back the material as uh, mamidarov will bring a queen into the game so so rook captures on d2 and now rook to e8 with check king to d3 knight to f3 now attacks the rook and rook to d1 check king to g2 and now we have knight to d6 attacking the rook rook to d8 uh and interestingly knight to d6 here uh was uh, uh was the final mistake mamidarov made uh you have to play rook to c1 or rook to b1 or rook to a1 or move the rook somewhere but after knight to d6, the position is once again winning for Alireza, uh, and he goes after the knight. Rook to d8. Attacking the knight, we have knight to c4, and now rook captures on d5. King to e4, and now rook captures on d1. Alireza once again blunders the win. This is incredible. The, this game has so many ups and downs. Uh, point is that here, rook c5 is winning. You attack the knight, and only if the knight moves, then you have access to e5 check, and then you're going to capture this pawn. For example, knight captures on e3 with check, king to f2, and now it doesn't matter what you play, uh, you don't have this check as the knight covers this square. Let's say king d3, we play knight to e1 with check, king to d4, now rook captures on h5 and now the pawns are winning but okay like i said it's rapid it's a very easy to uh, point out uh, what, what was missed uh, in in the analysis after the game so instead rook captures on d1 was played and now again the game is a draw knight captures on e3 with check as it comes with a fork now most likely alireza just missed this king to f2 knight captures on d1 with king to e1 attacking the knight and now knight back to e3 knight to d2 with check king to d3 and now knight to b3 uh, we have pawn to h4 uh, busting uh, open the structure here as the three connected pawns are much too strong so g captures on h4 and now knight g2 check going after the pawns king f2 we have knight captures on h4 and king to g3 we have knight to f5 with check king g4 and here comes finally the last mistake mamedarov makes and i'm not even tricking you there are no more mistakes in this game here we have to play knight to h6 check or knight to d6 but mamedarov plays knight to d4 he offers a knight trade and uh, all it is just accepts it you don't even have to accept it you could just start advancing the pawn uh, but this is much cleaner so knight captures king captures and now f5 and now 
and you can see that the uh, pass pawn is just much too fast. If you start advancing this pawn, we just play f6, a4, uh, f7, a3, f8, queen, and after a2, of course, the white queen has all the time in the world to stop the pawn, like, let's say, queen f2 check, picks up the pawn, and so on. So, king to e5 was played, but of course, now king to g5, and you cannot win this race. Uh, we have a5, we have a uh, pawn to f6, king to e6, now king to g6, not allowing king to f7, a4, f F7 and he was in this position on move 68 that Shahrir Mamedyar resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So really, really a wild game. Uh, Mamedyarov, I, I think he was just, uh, you know, completely pumped after winning a game against Magnus Carlsen and now he was... Uh, <laughs> So much looking forward to beating Alireza with the black pieces, but Alireza shows that he's a true fighter and he takes down Mamedyarov. Uh, here you resign because after a few more moves, let's say king e7, king g7, a3, of course, you bring a queen into the game, you pick up the pawn, and then, of course, it's an easy victory. So, yeah, here you just resign. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, yes, uh, these are the standings after six rounds of the Super United Croatia Rapid and Blitz. Alireza leading the tournament with nine points, followed by with eight Wesley so in Jordan Van Forest with 7 points, Maxim Vashelagra with 6, uh, Magnus Carlsen and Shahriar Mamedyarov with 5, Yanni Pomneshi, Linear Dominguez and Ivan Sharic with 4 points and Veselin Topalo with 3 points. So uh, really, really a wild game. Uh, Mamedyarov came prepared, he brought this bishop to e7 weapon to the party. Um, uh, Caruana did employ it uh, on two occasions like we mentioned. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it just didn't uh, do all that much. I mean, there were so many ups and downs, uh, you know, uh, uh, b both of them could have taken this game, uh, but uh, in the end, it was, uh, you know, the third mistake that cost Mamedia of the game. Usually in chess, you know, on a top level, it takes just one, but here uh, it took like three or maybe even four. I, I, I stopped following after some time. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, very nicely done by Alireza, who uh, was leading the tournament after the first day and now after the second day. And that is uh, even after he faced the world champion Magnus Carlsen. So incredibly impressive stuff. Uh, I would like to thank Dominic Albers, uh, Gordon Merker, uh, Tsanko Solov, uh, Wright Travis, and Michael Kalber for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this spectacular tournament. Uh, until it ends. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.